I'm sorry. Did somebody else just get a high score? And it's me? Why am I apologizing? I'm very proud of this fact. All right, I'll take it. And I got a free game. This is like the best day of my life. I love this. Having kids, getting married, that stuff's dumb. Winning at Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Drinking beer. <laughs> this is winning. Raise your fist in the air and sing along, kids. Heroes in a half shell, turtle power! It's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles time. Today on Classic Game Room, the podcast where I'm enjoying the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles pinball machine from Stern. Is there any game that you can't apply a Turtles license to? They've been on the Game Boy, the NES. I remember the NES game from way back when, way back in the day when I was a kid. Love that. I'll talk a bit about my introduction to the Turtles in the 80s when I first discovered them. Though, I'm pretty old school. I, I, I found them first in black and white comic books. Many of you probably discovered the Turtles on TV, which is the Turtles upon which this game is based. The Turtles' style and likeness and the sound and... Well, this game is very cool, though it's not one that made an immediate first good impression. Alright man, it's had a huge multi-ball again. Like, this game is all about multi-ball. Uh, five ball multi-ball, killed all kinds of mousers or robots or whatever, put soldiers, I don't know. Um, the, the problem is... I'm holding the flip, the right flipper up. I got the, I got my ball trapped. I'm out of beer. Like the bar's all the way over there. None of my friends are here. I don't have my kids here. What do I do? The struggle is real. You're, you're having a great game. You've got the ball trapped on one of the flippers to, to catch your breath, but you're out of beer, and none of your buddies are there. And the bar is like. Way, way over there in the distance. I'm playing once again at Pins Mechanical in Pittsburgh. An arcade bar. One of many arcade bars that's popped up these days. But, um... Like, somebody needs to... Somebody needs to come up with a, uh, a solution to this very specific and, and really very tragic issue. When you need a beer, but you can't just pause your pinball game. And there's, like, children floating around. And the problem with children, in addition to the fact that they're loud and germy, is that they'll take your free game if you leave one on the machine. The audacity of these little brats. <laughs> Crisis averted. So I end, my game ended. It was a decent game, but what's important is that I got a free game. So, you know, the, the green light in the front of the machine is blinking. But I'm out of beer, so I have to run to the bar to get a beer. And I run back. And like there's these little kids kind of approaching. I didn't push any little children out of the way. Just want to be very clear about that. But I do run faster than they do. So I am back to my game. Got my free game. Let's go. Choose your turtle. Oh, and I got a beer too. Mmm. Mmm. Is there anything that complements the turtles better than a cold beer? How about some pizza? Nice, refreshing cold pizza left in the sewer. Sounds great. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles machine is hard to miss. It's big, it's green, and it features the turtles. All four of them. Leonardo, Donatello, Michelangelo, and the other one. Donatello. Did I already say it? I don't remember. I'm a Leonardo guy. You always go with the turtle that carries the sword. Donatello. Choose my turtle. Let's see, we got Donatello. Leonardo, Leonardo Michelangelo. Michelangelo, Raphael. Bunch of pretentious names, if you ask me. I'm gonna go with Leonardo. Leonardo chosen. Like Stern's Star Wars, 
pinball machine. Each turtle starts with some advantages or disadvantages on the play field, depending on how seriously you want to take this game. Now, like I've said before, I'm only a mediocre pinball player at best. I love playing pinball, but like I kind of suck at it, so it's just fun. And one of my favorite things to do in pinball is to get a multi-ball because that's like a good cheap way to get a high score and try to find some way to get free games because these things are expensive now. I will literally fight my own children to get quarters to play these pinball machines. They're like a buck each. So if you, if you see the turtles machine but you, you like suck at pinball and you think it's kind of overwhelming at first, which it is, here's, here's the secret. Here's the trick to getting some free games in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It's actually kind of easy to do. I mean, not easy, but it's, it's easier than most of the other machines. There's like this thing in the middle. It's kind of hard to describe on, on, on radio here instead of television, but um, it's like the spot in the games where you lock your balls for multi-ball. You, you know, there's always like that spot. And it's kind of tricky to hit, but uh, just keep aiming for that over and over and over again and then you'll you'll, you'll start multi-ball which is actually really cool because the balls will fly down the uh, the left ramp and they all get like stuck on this magnetic pizza platter in the middle of the machine that spins it's a really cool effect and then and that's just fun it just kind of amplifies the fun and the machine goes bonkers and just keep the multi-ball going as long as possible and eventually you'll you'll hear that rewarding free game pop in there and like, I have no idea how I did it. It just kind of happens if I'm getting multi-ball and just going bonkers on the machine. So look, look up a picture online to get the sense of what this, this game is just pure chaos. Some of the other games have a little more reasonable art, like art design, like the flow of the game itself. This game just looks like chaos, which perhaps fits the turtle style pretty well, I guess. You've got uh, turtles on the play field, of course. Shredder, all the other bad. I don't really know all the other bad guys. Like I wasn't really into the Turtles cartoon back in the day. There we got April. Like I was more into the comics, like when the old school Turtles comics. So I'm not really, I'm not really a huge expert in the Turtles lore, to be perfectly honest. We got Turtle Power. We've got a pizza in the middle of the playfield, which collects the balls and sort of spins them all over the place. That's probably the game's most noticeable, memorable effect is the pizza platter in the middle, which is magnetic. It's a very cool design. The balls will like roll down the left side of the machine and they all get trapped and they spin on this pizza platter, because which is holding them together using the forces of magnetism. And then it spins. And like the balls are just locked on the platter and it's pretty cool. And then all of a sudden they like shoot all over the place and it like completely randomizes the game experience, which is one of the greatest features of pinball, is that no two games are ever the same. So I love that pizza platter spinning effect for the multi-ball. Also, it's it's spinning during the gameplay, which totally randomizes all of your shots. Like you're going for that spot I was telling you about, the the secret ball locking multi-ball multi -ball spot. But this thing is spinning and it like shoots your ball off in different directions if you're aiming for it. Sometimes it'll pop it up in the air and it's just, it's just chaos. Which is perhaps exactly what the turtles are like when all four of them are slaughtering enemies at the same time while dropping goofy one-liners which is why we like the Turtles. And if you're a fan of the classic Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon show, you're gonna love this because that's what the art design and the sound effects and the imagery are all about. doesn't feature any of like the newer movie kind of like the new movie was actually pretty cool but like a weird art design this doesn't have that style it doesn't have the classic hardcore old school comic book style it's like the 90s tv show and like the other stern games there's a big screen in the middle that's showing all the cartoon animations and admittedly it's a lot to take in at once if you're actually trying to get a feel for what you're supposed to do in this game it's gonna take a while like collecting weapons or whatever Starting missions, fighting, fighting enemies. All the enemies are here. You know, you got a shredder on the machine. Your, your mentor, or whatever landlord, splinters there. April doing whatever April does. What did April do? Was she a reporter? I don't remember. I had to look this one up. So the turtles first came out in 1984. Like I kind of discovered them. I'm gonna say 86 or 87. I still have my third printing, first issue Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comic book around here somewhere. It's a great book. I love that. Like 
classic old school hardcore Turtles style, which they obviously softened over the years to make it more marketable. And, uh, you know, that kind of paid off for them, so good job. The animated series upon which this game is based uh, started in 87. Now, I kind of associate it with the 90s, but like by 86, 87, I was really just all about like Galaxy Rangers, Robotech, Transformers, and G.I. Joe. And like that never changed. So I remember seeing the Turtles, I'm like, right, I kind of like the Turtles, but I preferred the Hardcore Turtles, and, and besides, the Turtles don't have transforming jets or giant robots. I mean, they probably do in some fashion, but you know what I mean. The Turtles don't have snake eyes. But what the turtles do have is the ability to spot the pinball machine from a half mile away. This thing is loud. I think it's Stern's loudest, brightest machine. Maybe maybe even louder than the Foo Fighters machine, but I'll talk about that one later. I like the Foo Fighters machine, but like when I walk into the arcade and I see Godzilla and Star Wars, I'm like, all right, I got to make a beeline to these two games. But you know the one that I actually prefer is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles after... The time that I've spent playing this one, I, I, I it, ta it takes some time. I, it's hard to put a finger on why. I think it's the design of the playfield. Like, it's really tight. And that's off-putting at first. You know, when you play Star Wars, like, Star Wars is all about, like, speed and, like, the whole, the whole middle of the game is wide open and, like, there's no extra flippers or anything. You know, Turtles has, like, your two major flippers and there's, like, a lot of space on the left. That kind of saves your ball, actually. There's like these two ramps on the left, whatever they're called. Um, there's a flipper on the left side of the machine. You got the spinning thing. But then there's like a kind of like a bunch of ramps and almost like a second level kind of thing going on. But the space in the middle, like where you think most of the action would take place, is very tight. So in order to survive in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, you have to keep the ball kind of like up on the ramps and getting multi. You got to get multi-ball. Like, if you don't get multi-ball, you're screwed because it's it's a pretty hard to just play the middle of the play field over and over again, which is exactly how I always feel about Star Wars. Like, that, that game is merciless. And the Godzilla layout is a bit more traditional, I would say. But uh, when you first approach the Turtles machine, you're going to be like, what the hell's going on here? What do I do? And you're going to just die right away. But give it, give it some time and you'll start to figure out how to just keep the ball, like, away from the middle or... You know the death shoots on on the side. It's it's hard it's hard to admit this, but I think the Turtles Machine is my current favorite Stern game. I might like it even more than Jaws, and I love the Jaws Machine. But the ability to just keep smacking that uh, multi ball thing and get the ball spinning on the pizza platter, and then get some free games in there makes Turtles just really playable and a lot of fun. In much the same way, I think their Avengers game is fun. I really like the uh, the Stern Avengers game. For the same reason, it's not that hard to just keep the game going. So if you're a mediocre player, you get more bang for your buck when you're getting some free games. I'm pleased to say I turned this game around. I think I got three extra balls, and I've got an extra game after this one. Uh, 12 million, 490, 420. Let's, uh, let's keep it going here. Turtles. This, this game's growing on me. That was a little confusing at first, but I'm starting to figure it out now. That was one of my earlier audio takes, and yes, I got a lot of free balls in this game, which is uh, how, I was, how I was able to get some free games. And how did I get the free balls? Uh, multi-ball over and over and over and over and over and over again and uh, once you've got a bunch of free balls and some multi and, and you've like pretty pretty much figured out how to get multi-ball then then it's like a good time as a mediocre pinball player to sort of figure out the other minutia and like the ramps and the specific missions that you can start and complete for big points big prizes big value get many extra balls free balls whatever Get all the extra balls you can. You can never have too many balls.
Definitely one of my top three stern pinball machines up there with Godzilla. Iron Maiden, I mean, obviously Iron, Iron Maiden's just amazing. And I, I never reviewed that yet, so... Uh, they, they actually have one of those at, at Pins, so that's that'll be coming up soon, though I gotta watch the audio recording on that one. As one might expect, there's a lot of good music on the Iron Maiden machine. Though I feel like the only way to properly review that is while wearing an Iron Maiden t-shirt and drinking Iron Maiden beer. So, you know, twist my arm, that all sounds incredible. But uh, why did I never really get into the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles TV show? This is like a Gen X and Millennials divide, I think. Because Gen X, we, we grew up on like, I mean, I'm, I'm tail end of Gen X, 75, but we grew up on like He-Man, you know, Transformers. And if you remember GoBots, you're, you know, you're definitely Gen X. When, when is Stern giving us that, that side kill versus leader one multiball? I'm not sure GoBots has the staying power for an arcade game, but damn it, it should. GoBots are pretty cool. Anyway, I'm easily distracted. By the mid 80s, like the, the, the golden age, that first wave of toys turned into cartoons, really pioneered by He Man, had kind of run its course. You know, there were like all these, like late 86 brought a lot of kind of off. I remember it as 86, maybe it was 85, 86. You know, we started to get like Jason the Wheeled Warriors, Galaxy Rangers, a lot of these shows that weren't nearly as huge as Transformers, though some of them are pretty good. I mean, Galaxy Rangers is still one of my favorites. But there was definitely a glut of content by, like, the late 80s. 87 for sure. And, like, th this must be so hard to explain to kids these days who have every single TV show ever made all at once on a device for free. But, like, back then we had, uh, you know, we had, like, three channels to choose from, maybe a few more if you had cable. And everything just, you know, ran at a certain time, so you had to make decisions like it was hard to watch like I, I always wanted to watch Robotech but it was on at the same time as Galaxy Rangers so I had to like kind of stagger them which of course made Robotech very difficult because it's storyline driven Galaxy Rangers was more traditional episode by episode Anyway, by the time the Turtles animated series came out, I was already like on to stuff like RoboCop and the Terminator and like Predator and Commando and these like move. I think we had we must have had cable by then, so I basically would just stay up late at night when my parents weren't watching and just watch Commando on repeat. So they probably wouldn't let me watch Terminator, but I figured out how to program the VCR and just record Terminator from Cinemax at like you know three in the morning, among other things. Yes, if you know, you know. The days of outsmarting your parents, reprogramming the VCR. Are, well, they're no more. They're no longer a thing, I guess. Now we just have to deal with the fact that our kids are smarter than us in every way. Dad, why are we smarter than you? Well, because I inhaled two decades of cigarette smoke and drank a hundred thousand beers. But that makes me more durable. Or so I keep telling myself. I'm still here and I'm enjoying pinball and if you can figure out the happy hour times you save a bundle These are the important life lessons that kids today haven't learned yet Yeah, you know what? I wonder if happy hour is gonna be like the next thing that we lose as a society I mean, We've lost civility and social media has turned everybody into a bunch of idiots. I Think I think we need to fight for happy hour. We got to fight for our right to party and half price drinks and uh, one of the best ways to do that is by frequenting your local arcade bar and playing games like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I think for the next podcast, I got to get back to some to some arcade games. There's a bunch of those I've never covered before, and I'm and there's like and, and Pins actually has a nice selection. We've also got Coop Deville here in Pittsburgh. Clearly, I love games like Robotron and Ms. Pac-Man, but. I haven't spent a whole lot of time talking about Stargate or Zaxxon, Burger Time, even Fix-It Felix is a lot of fun. Joust, Cubert, Outrun is definitely on the schedule. So much more 80s to cover here on Classic Game Room, the podcast, as the show has found a new voice here. Hopefully you're listening somewhere. I mean, you're, I know you're listening somewhere. Maybe it's on VHS or 8-track, who can say? That's exactly the kind of crap I would do in the future. And by the future, I mean like later today. 
I do have an 8-track player here set up for recording and a mini disc player. It's got that in. Because if you're if you're producing music these days and you're not releasing your albums on 8-track and mini disc, like you suck. It's just common sense. That's where your audience is. Stuck in the Well, that's where my audience is. Literally sitting here playing with a Star Wars figure in my coffee mug. <laughs> Which guy is this? Let's see, his body looks like C-3PO, but his face looks like an insect. That really narrows it down, doesn't it? Man, get away from my girlfriend! Knock next time! I could probably talk for 15 hours straight about space balls. All right. So the podcast is out there on Spotify, and uh, it's slowly seeping out to other services. So keep an ear out. Got a bunch of stuff in production for this and uh, having a good time. The music in this show is all by Omega Ronin and actually by Turbo Volcano. New Turbo Volcano coming out soon. And you'll find that stuff on Spotify, Amazon, Apple, Bandcamp, iTunes. iTunes is Apple. Um, Vectrex Audio Delivery Service, Atari Live, ColecoVision Subscription Service, which you'll find as part of the Max Bundle with Paramount+. Plus. Everybody loves the ColecoVision subscription service, except that you have to also pay for ESPN at the same time, which kind of sucks. Speaking of things that no longer exist, remember when cable costs more than streaming services? (laughs) Oh gosh, we really should go back to VHS. Things were just better in the 80s in every single possible way. Sure, you walked into a restaurant with your parents and you left smelling like an ashtray, but I would argue that it was worth it. I mean, there had to be some kind of a residual high in there somewhere as a nine-year-old. And the 80s gave us Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Heroes in a Half Shell, a great pinball machine. If you see one, you gotta play it and give it some time. Feel the game, figure out how to get that multi-ball, and you'll keep this one going for a while. Good bang for the buck that doesn't kill you instantly once you figure it out. Befriend the turtles. Make friends with the turtles. Going back to my Gen X versus Millennial thing. Like, was Gen X really into Power Rangers? Because I think, like, Power Rangers and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and, like, that weird, like, 3D animated Transformers show, to me, that's all, like, a millennial thing. Like, I liked Power Rangers and, like, the campy Ultraman style, and obviously Pink Ranger was awesome. But I never really got into Power Rangers. Like, I, anyway, maybe we'll get a Power Rangers pinball machine in the future. I mean, that's certainly a big enough license. And, like, there's what, at least there were originally five Rangers. Which kind of fits into, you know, Stern's character-driven gameplay with these games where you choose one of the four turtles or one of the Star Wars characters like Han Solo or R2-D2. You can choose one of the Power Rangers. I choose you! And you chose to listen all the way through this podcast. So, thank you. I'll see you next time on Classic Game Room, the podcast from an arcade somewhere stuck in the 1980s. Alright, just had a huge multi-ball. Racking up all kinds of crazy ice points here. And I think the extra ball is lit. I gotta hit it. I got an extra, g- I got a free game again. Total bonus, 3275000 Somebody wake these turtles up. Congre- oh, I can to enter my initials. Oh, awesome. Is that one of the high scores? Yeah, baby. <laughs>